Tinkercad is a 3D modeling software that you can use to prototype your inventions. You don't even need a 3D printer to make it useful. Just having a design can help communicate your ideas and even look better than some of your initial sketches. Let's get started. After I've made a Tinkercad account, you're gonna to come to this screen and this is where your designs will live. So let's jump in. I'm gonna go over here to the right where it says create and select 3D design. Once the page lo loads up, you'll notice a couple things, so let me help you navigate. This blue cross section is going to be your work plane. This is where you'll be physically building your design. Over here on the right is your basic shapes. This is where you'll grab objects to build your design and what you'll use. At the top left, you'll see the name of your project. Tinkercad populates with a random name, and so to help you keep track of your project, the best practice is to change it. I like to rename it the project I'm working on plus my name. That just helps keeps everything organized. So if I want to change the view of my work plane, there's three ways I can do that. The first is holding down the right button on my mouse and moving my mouse around. As you can see, I am now changing the view around my work plane. The second way is there is a cube at the top left of your screen that you'll see that says top, front, right, or left. Using the left mouse button, if I click that and drag my mouse, I will now move around the screen. If I ever want to return to my normal view, I'm going to click the home button over here at the top left. By clicking that, it returns me to my normal state. So now that we know how to move around the screen, let's get started by building something. So the first thing that I'm going to do is grab one of these objects. I like starting with the red cube, and I'm just gonna bring it anywhere to my work plane. You can tell that the object is selected because there will be these other white and black cubes surrounding it. If I grab one of these small black cubes, I can change my object's dimensions on one axis. So for instance, if I grab this black cube and move it up and down, I will increase or decrease the length of my object. These white squares you see change my object's dimensions on two axes. So by dragging it out, I'm making it wider and longer. If I want to manipulate my object to grow at the same rate, I hold down the shift key on my keyboard, then drag my object. You'll see that it scales at the same rate. So now that I have a larger object, maybe I want to rotate it so that my rectangle is now sitting upright. With my object selected, you'll see these arched arrows. These allow us to rotate the object on three axes. Right now, you may only see these top two, and you may have to change your view to see the third one. So to rotate my object, I'm going to select one of these arrows and begin to drag it. If you notice this wheel popped up, I have two options. If I spin it within the inner circle, it will start changing it by 22 degrees. If I pull my mouse out, to this outer circle, I can change it in increments of one degree. So I have a lot more precision on how I rotate this object. So as I said, I'm gonna move it to about 90 degrees so that it's upright. Now, as you can see, my object is kind of floating in the middle of my work plane here. When working with a 3D object, you want it to always be flat on that work plane. So what I'm gonna do is select my object and hit the D key on my keyboard. As you can see, it jumps it up and lays it flat across the work plane. So now that I have this giant cube, I'm going to wanna add some more details to it. So what I'm gonna do is grab another object. Say I'm gonna drag this purple cone and I want to add it into my shape. Well, maybe I'm going to rotate it again so that it's sideways. And now I'm going to drag it so that it is touching my object. So it's pointing out. So right now, if I move this red cube, it moves by itself. The purple cone does not join it. So I wanna join these objects together so that one, if I make any changes to the dimensions, they both change at the same rate. So what I'm gonna do is highlight these objects. What you will do is with your left click of your mouse, is click down and drag the square around your two objects that you want to group. Once you have that down, you'll go over here to the top right and you'll see the square circle button. 
Once you click that, the objects will join together and you can tell that you were successful because both objects are now the same color. In this instance, it turns into a red. So now, as you can see, if I move the cube around, the cone follows. If I change the dimensions, the cone also changes dimensions. But say I don't want th these objects grouped together anymore. I'd highlight that object, come up here to the top right, and click this other square circle to ungroup the objects. Once again, you'll know you're successful when the objects change back to the original colors. So now that I have my object, say I want to give it some more detail and change the colors. That's very simple. First, select the object you want. So I'm gonna go with this red cube. I'm gonna come over here to this option where it says solid. And when I select that, a bunch of colors appear. I can now change it to whatever color I want. Additionally, I can make the shape transparent so you can see through it. This becomes helpful later when making complex designs. Additionally, if I were to, once again, group those objects together, the objects will become the same color. If you want to have your objects group but change the colors, by selecting the object, click the solid button again, and hit multicolor, you'll be able to control each individual piece so that they can be different colors. So that's just a way to provide some extra detail to your design when you're working in Tinkercad. Another function that is very helpful in Tinkercad is creating a hole. As you can see in the basic objects, these first two are a hole of cube and a hole of a cylinder. They're the two most common holes that you might make, but any basic shape can be turned into a hole. So let me show you how it works. What I'm going to do is drag this cube into my rectangle, and I'm gonna group them together. When I group them together, you'll see that it took a bite or a hole out of my object. Depending on how deep I put that object into my design will determine how much it takes away. So for instance, if I want to make a hole in the center of my rectangle, I drag this cylinder through and make sure that it's pointing out of both sides. Now when I group it together, you can now see directly through my design. If you ever want to undo it, up here at the top left is an undo button. You can also hit Control Z to undo your last step. Finally, another helpful tool is the Cruise tool. The way this works is say I want to connect two objects together. So I want to put this little pyramid roof on top of my cube. What I would do is hit C on my keyboard, and now I can grab this object and drag it around my design. So that makes it easier to move objects on top of one another and helps you quickly, rapidly make your prototype design. These were just some helpful tips to help you get ready to build in Tinkercad. We hope that you use these tools to make some amazing projects and we cannot wait to see what you make next.